proteins are large complex molecules that play many critical roles in the body. They do most of the work in cells and are required for the structure, function and regulation of the tissues and organs. Proteins build, maintain and replace the tissues in our body. Our muscles, our organs and our immune system are made up mostly of proteins. These proteins are made up of hundreds or thousands of smaller units called amino acids which are attached to one another in long chains. There are 20 different types of amino acids that can be combined to make a protein. The sequence of amino acids determines each protein's unique three-dimensional structure and its specific function. Many foods contain protein but the best sources are beef, poultry, fish, eggs, dairy products, nuts, seeds and legumes like black beans and lentils. The important functional proteins are antibody. The antibodies bind to specific foreign particles such as viruses and bacteria to help protect the body. Examples are immunoglobulin G which is termed as IgG. Enzymes. Enzymes carry out almost all biochemical reactions that take place in cells. They also assist with the formation of new molecules by reading the genetic information stored in DNA. There are many examples of enzymes basically pectin methylesterase, RNA polymerase etc. Functional proteins are also messenger. Messenger proteins such as some types of hormones which transmit signals to coordinate biological processes between different cells, tissues and organs. Example growth hormone. The structural components, these proteins provide structure and support for cells. On a larger scale, they also allow the body to move. Example is protein actin. The transport or storage proteins, these proteins bind and carry atoms and small molecules within cells and throughout the body. Example is ferritin. Our body uses the protein that we eat to make lots of specialized functional molecules that have specific jobs. For instance, our body uses protein to make hemoglobin an important part of red blood cells that carry oxygen to every part of our body. Other proteins are used to build cardiac muscle. In fact, whether we are running or just hanging out, protein is doing important work like moving our legs, carrying out metabolism and protecting us from diseases. When we eat foods that contain protein, the digestive juices in our stomach and intestine go to work. They break down the protein in food into basic units called amino acids. The amino acids are reused to make the proteins our body needs to maintain muscles, bones, blood and body organs. Proteins are assembled from amino acids using information encoded in genes. Each protein has its own unique amino acid sequence that is specified by the nucleotide sequence of the gene encoding this protein. The genetic code is a set of three nucleotide sets called codons and each three nucleotide combination designates an amino acid. The protein structure can be described in four levels of complexity which is known as levels of organization of protein structure. These levels are primary structure which is the linear arrangement of amino acids in a protein. Secondary structure, these are areas of folding or coiling within a protein. Example, alpha helices and beta sheets which are stabilized by hydrogen bonding. Tertiary structure, which is the final three-dimensional structure of a protein which results from a large number of non-covalent interactions between amino acids. Quaternary structure which is non-covalent interactions that bind multiple polypeptides into a single larger protein. Example, hemoglobin has a quaternary structure due to association of two alpha globin and two beta globin polyproteins. Now we come to primary structure of proteins. This structure is the linear chain of amino acids in which the amino acids are connected with each other by peptide bond. Chemically, the peptide bond is an amide linkage 
which is formed between the alpha carbon carboxylic acid group and alpha carbon amino group of two consecutive amino acids with the elimination of a water molecule. In the linear chain of amino acids, there is a free amino terminal at one end known as N terminal and a free carboxylic acid terminal at the other end known as C terminal. The number of amino acid residues in primary structure ranges from 50 to 30,000. Below 50 amino acid residues, it is considered to be a peptide. The largest polypeptide existing in primary structure is found to be 30,000 amino acid long. Now we come to Ramachandran plot. In a polypeptide backbone chain, the main chain N C alpha and C alpha C bonds only are relatively free to rotate. These rotations are represented by the torsion angles phi and psi. Based on these angles, G and Ramachandran gave a plot to show the allowed and disallowed secondary structures. The plot consists of phi on x axis and psi on y axis. Depending upon the phi and psi angles, he gave the secondary structures which are sterically stable if they fall in the regions of allowed conformations. Ramachandran used computer models of small polypeptides to systematically vary phi and psi with the objective of finding stable conformations. Secondary structure of proteins Pauling and Cori were the first to give the possible conformations of proteins. The secondary structure are linear and are formed by hydrogen bonding between carboxylic and amino group of peptide chains. The secondary structures exist in two conformations alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. The beta pleated sheet may be parallel or anti parallel. Now we come to alpha helix. The alpha helix is the first structure formed from the synthesized polypeptide chain. This structure has some characteristic features. The polypeptide backbone is tightly wound around an imaginary axis. The R groups protrude outward from the axis. There are 3.6 amino acids per turn of the alpha helix. The distance traveled per turn is 0.54 nanometer. The spacing between two amino acids is 0.15 nanometer. The alpha helix is stabilized by hydrogen bonds. Alpha helix has the lowest energy level, hence it is formed spontaneously. The amino acids are L amino acids and right handed helix is more stable as compared to left handed one. The stability of an alpha helix is affected by the identity of the side chains. Some amino acid residues are found in conformations more often than others. For example, alanine has a small uncharged side chain and fits well into the alpha helical conformation. Alanine residues are prevalent in the alpha helices of all classes of proteins. In contrast, tyrosine and asparagine with their bulky side chains are less common in alpha helices. Glycine whose side chain is a single hydrogen atom destabilizes alpha helical structures since rotation around its alpha carbon is very difficult. For this reason, many helices begin or end with glycine residues. If a polypeptide chain has a long block of glutamic acid residues, it does not form alpha helix because the R groups repel each other. Proline is the least common residue in an alpha helix because its rigid cyclic pyrrolidone side chain disrupts the right handed helical conformation. In addition, proline also lacks a hydrogen atom on its amide nitrogen and cannot fully participate in intrahelical hydrogen bonding. For these reasons, proline residues are found more often at the ends of alpha helices rather than in the interior. However, the structures of polyglycine and polyproline helices are biologically significant because they form the basic structural motif of collagen, 
a structural protein that contains high proportion of both glycine and proline. The examples of alpha helix are alpha keratin which is present in hair, horn, nails and feathers. Collagen is a triple helical cable and occurs in all multicellular animals and is the most abundant protein of vertebrates. It is a major stress bearing component of connective tissue such as bone, teeth, cartilage, tendon, ligament and the fibrous matrices of skin and blood vessels. Nearly one third of amino acid residues in collagen are glycine, another 15 to 30 percent of them are proline and hydroxyproline residues. Secondary structure is beta pleated sheet structure. The beta sheets are common structural motifs in proteins. These structures are formed by hydrogen bonding between adjacent polypeptide chains. These may be parallel or anti parallel. The parallel beta sheets. Beta sheets are parallel if the polypeptide strands run in the same direction N terminus to C terminus. The N terminus of one beta strand will be close to the N terminus of the other beta strand. The parallel arrangement is less stable because the geometry of the individual amino acid molecule forces the hydrogen bonds to occur at an angle making them longer and thus weaker. Hence, parallel beta sheets of less than 5 strands is rare. The anti parallel beta sheets. Beta sheets are anti parallel if the polypeptide strands run in opposite direction. The N terminus of one beta strand will be close to the C terminus of the other beta strand. In anti parallel arrangement, the hydrogen bonds are aligned directly opposite to each other, making for stronger and more stable bonds. An anti parallel beta pleated sheet forms when a polypeptide chain sharply reverses direction. This can occur in the presence of two consecutive proline residues which create an angled kink in the polypeptide chain and bend it back upon itself. The beta sheets in globular proteins consist of from 2 to as many as 15 polypeptide strands, the average is 6 strands. The polypeptide chains in a beta sheet are up to 15 residues long, the average length is 6 residues. Example, a 6 stranded anti parallel beta sheet occurs in the jack bean protein concanevelin A. The regular secondary structures helices and beta sheets comprise around half of the average globular proteins. The remaining polypeptide segments have a coil or loop conformation. These are non-repetitive secondary structures and are very irregular. All the proteins of more than 60 residues contain one or more loops of 6 to 16 residues that are not components of helices or beta sheets. Now we come to a higher level of organization, the tertiary structure of proteins. The tertiary structure of proteins is its three dimensional arrangement that is the folding of its secondary structural elements together with the spatial dispositions of its side chains. The tertiary structure is the final specific geometric shape that a protein assumes. Globular proteins may contain both alpha helices and beta sheets in varying proportions and combinations. Some proteins like myoglobin consist only of alpha helices spanned by short connecting links that have coiled conformations. Some like concanevelin A have more beta sheets but are devoid of alpha helices. In globular proteins, the amino acid side chains are spatially distributed according to their polarities. The non-polar residues valin, leucine, isoleucine, methionine and phenylalanine largely occur in the interior of the protein out of contact with the aqueous solvent. This distribution is promoted by hydrophobic interactions. The charged polar residues arginine, histidine, lysine, aspartic acid and glutamic acid are largely located on the surface of a protein 
in contact with the aqueous solvent. Here they have specific functions like promoting catalysis or participating in metal ion binding. The uncharged polar groups serine, threonine, asparagine, tyrosine and tryptophan are usually present in the interior of the molecule. The interior of a protein is like a molecular crystal that is very efficiently packed. There are a number of bonds that stabilize the protein structure. This final shape is determined by a variety of bonding interactions between the side chains on the amino acids. These bonding interactions may be stronger than the hydrogen bonds between amide groups holding the helical structure. As a result, bonding interactions between side chains may cause a number of folds, bands and loops in the protein chain. Different fragments of the same chain may become bonded together. There are various types of bonding interactions between side chains including hydrogen bonding, salt bridges, disulfide bonds and non-polar hydrophobic interactions. The disulfide bonds. Disulfide bonds are the covalent bonds and the strongest bonds stabilizing the structure of proteins. Disulfide bonds are formed by the oxidation of two cysteine residues to form a covalent sulfur-sulfur bond which can be intra or intermolecular bridges. Cysteine is the only amino acid whose side chain can form covalent bonds yielding disulfide bridges with other cysteine side chain. The prototype of a protein disulfide bond is the 2 amino acid peptide cysteine which is composed of 2 cysteine amino acids joined by a disulfide bond. The second type of interaction is hydrogen bonding. When two atoms bearing partial negative charges share a partially positive charged hydrogen, the atoms are engaged in a hydrogen bond. The correct 3D structure of a protein is dependent on an intricate network of hydrogen bonds. These can occur between a variety of atoms involving atoms on two different amino acid side chains atoms on amino acid side chains and water molecules at the protein surface, atoms on amino acid side chains and protein backbone atoms, backbone atoms and water molecules at the protein surface and backbone atoms on two different amino acids. The hydrogen bonding between side chains occurs in a variety of circumstances. The most usual cases are between two alcohols, an alcohol and an acid, two acids or an alcohol and an amine or amide. There are many amino acid side chains that may hydrogen bond to each other. Examples between two alcohols, serine, threonine and tyrosine, alcohol and an acid, aspartic acid and tyrosine, between two acids aspartic acid and glutamic acid, alcohol and amine, serine and lysine, between alcohol and amide like serine and asparagine. The next type of interaction is salt bridges or ionic interactions. The ionic interaction is formed between the positive ammonium group and the negative carboxyl group. Example, the carboxyl group of glutamic acid and the ammonium group of lysine. Any combination of the various acidic or amino group of the amino acid side chains will have this effect. These ionic interactions are strong but do not greatly stabilize the protein. Ionic binding in the interior of protein is rare because most of the charged amino acids lie on the protein surface. The next interactions are non-polar hydrophobic interactions. The hydrophobic interactions of non-polar side chains contribute significantly to the stabilizing of the tertiary structures in proteins. The non-polar groups mutually repel water and other polar groups and results in a net attraction of the non-polar groups for each other. 
hydrocarbon alkyl groups on alanine, valine, leucine and isoleucine interact in this way. The hydrophobic interactions are relatively stronger than other weak intermolecular forces like van der Waal interactions or hydrogen bonds. As a result of these interactions, the non-polar side chains of amino acids come on the inside of a globular protein while the outside of the protein contains mainly polar groups. Now we come to van der Waal forces. The van der Waals force is a transient weak electrical attraction of one atom for another. Van der Waals attractions exist because every atom has an electron cloud that can fluctuate yielding a temporary electric dipole. The transient dipole in one atom can induce a complementary dipole in another atom provided the two atoms are quite close. These short lived complementary dipoles provide a weak electrostatic attraction the van der Waal force. Van der Waals attractions although transient and weak that is 10 to the power 3 times weaker than covalent bonds can provide an important component of protein structure stability because of their high number. By the combined contribution of many bonds the tertiary and quaternary structures are stabilized. The highest level of organization of proteins is quaternary structure of proteins. Quaternary structure is the combination of two or more chains to form a complete unit. The interactions between the chains are similar to those in tertiary structure but are distinguished only by being interchain rather than intrachain. The quaternary structure is always oligomeric that is composed of more than one subunits. These subunits may be identical that is homo oligomeric or non-identical that is hetero oligomeric. An example of homo oligomeric dimer is HIV protease. Some proteins are composed of non-identical subunits or chains. A simple example is insulin which is made up of two chains the alpha chain and the beta chain linked by two disulfide bridges. Many enzymes are composed of subunits with diverse functions in which some parts may be known as regulatory subunits and the functional core is known as catalytic subunits. The examples of proteins with quaternary structure include hemoglobin, DNA polymerase and ion channels. Some other assemblies known as multiprotein complexes also possess quaternary structure. Examples of such multiprotein complexes are nucleosomes and microtubules. Changes in quaternary structure can occur through conformational changes within individual subunits or through reorientation of the subunits relative to each other. It is through such changes that the phenomenon of cooperativity and allostery are manifested in multimeric enzymes and by this many proteins undergo regulation and perform their physiological functions. Mm -hmm.